California prison politics. A whole lot different than everywhere else. <clears throat> What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. New video. Before I get into today's topic, I have a short list. I want to shout out the people that donated to the live yesterday. We had a morning live. Um, sent super chats as well as cash apps. And that was FPSD. Just in time, Lucas Jackson and Sam Ramirez. Thank you guys very much for the support. I appreciate you. Now, yesterday I did a video. And I don't know, if maybe I'm, maybe this could become a new series. I don't know. You guys know. I, I'm only going to go so far. My comfort zone isn't very large. Isn't very big when it comes to talking about um, certain prison stuff. Especially the politics. Now, stuff that... I think isn't going to affect anyone's program in there. Um, I, I I will be willing to think about posting on. So yesterday's video, I, I talked about a dilemma that a homie in Pelican Bay shoe that was a tier tender, a dilemma that he was in, right? And people were like, hey, you left me hanging. And I didn't think about that. I was trying to think of the message, not what happened to that individual. So just so you guys know, and I'll try to remember to post the video up here. So if you guys missed it, you guys can go and check it out. Um, but what happened, what wound up happening was uh, the new arrival, the one that came and one legend said he had to go. Another one said he was good. What happened was he wound up moving out. Which isn't surprising because he's not going to want to be in the same pod with the dude upstairs. He knows who who put something on him and who didn't. So he moved out. I don't remember where he went, but he moved out. And so the homie never had to make that decision. And like I said in the video, no matter what decision he made, it was going to be the bad one. Now... Today, I want to talk about something I've spoken about in the past, but I never went into details. And a lot of you guys asked me about it. And that is curfews. Prison yard curfews. And this is in regards to Southerners. Northerners have prison yard curfews as well. And maybe Gunner, um, maybe Gunner should do a video on that because... The curfews for Northerners are a lot different than the curfews for Southerners. There aren't as many uh, Northerners in the system as Southerners. And so they're not going to be willing to take to take the risks that the Southerners can as far as sticking around for a minute. Okay. So usually their curfews are very short, but I'll let Gunner get into it and get into the thought process if, you know, if he's willing to. But I'm going to speak on, I'll speak on a few things regarding the curfew. A lot of people were confused by the curfew. And you know how, you know, out here in society, there's a curfew. Like, I think minors have a, what is it, 10 p.m. curfew and then... Um, they can be picked up for curfew violation and their parents have to pick them up. Something, I don't know. I don't know. When I was a kid, I was everywhere in the streets at night, all hours of the night. But that is a law. And so you have only a certain amount of hours in the day that you can be outside the house unsupervised and then the law can get involved, right? Same thing in prison. But the law is not the COs. In prison, nobody gives a damn about what rules the COs created. It's the rules that your faction has created that you're going to adhere to before anything above all else. So I'm going to talk about three different prisons and the curfews that those three prisons had. I was actually in two of those prisons. I wasn't in the other one. It was a lower level prison, right? So we'll start with the prison I wasn't in, and that is CMC. CMC West, there wasn't a curfew that I'm aware of. That's a fire camp. CMC East had a curfew. And if I remember right, it was the shortest curfew for Southerners. If I remember right, it was 30 days. So if you have a 30-day curfew, that means... 
when you get there from your date of arrival, the time starts ticking. You have 30 days to get off on that yard. Okay. Next would be, which is the next shortest curfew to Hatchapi back in the days. Now it's already back to what it was before, I think. But back in the days, you had a 90 day curfew. Again, from the day that a Southerner hit 4A or 4B, which was the max yards, the, the, the level four yards, the first 180s built in California, the California prison system were built in, in Tehachapi and they're called 4A and 4B. They call it Tehachapi Max. There was a 90 day curfew there. In CMC East and in Tehachapi back then, there was dropouts on the yard. There were defectors. There were dudes who at one time were legends and had flipped and testified. That's why you had the 30 and the 90 day curfews there. Okay. And then <clears throat> finally, there was C facility in New Folsom. For the Southerners, C facility in New Folsom up until the year 2000. It changed in 2000. There was a nine-month curfew. And people were like, what? Nine months? There's northerners that are hearing 30 days, 90 days, and that's a long time. So nine months is a hell of a long time. But see, in, in C facility in New Folsom, there were no dropouts. What you had there was dudes who had been whacked, southerners who had been whacked, got checked or whatever and when they went to the hospital and then they went to ad seg and then when they released they were sent from b facilities where they got hit they sent them to c facility and they weren't rats didn't have bad paperwork they were just dudes that probably had a dope dead or something went wrong and they got whacked and then they wound up over there so it was basically to the southerners it was looked at as a as a, as a victim yard so if you were anybody with any kind of morality prison morals and you had an agenda in there we'll call it um you were not gonna stay there okay you were going to get off within nine months now people are probably saying damn why are these curfews so long well for the southerners when you land in a spot i've said it in a lot of my videos your work is a representation of your seriousness. It's a representation of you. It's a direct reflection on you. So if you land on a yard and that yard has high profile DOs, dropouts, if, if you land on a yard that has basically what they'll refer to in there as trophies, and the first thing you did is you went and rushed somebody with no weapon that maybe was a chomo or, 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 or who knows what, but he was, he was Rasa and you saw him and you got off on him. When you go to the, when you do that and you go to the back, meaning as say, you're not going to get disciplined, but in the eyes of everyone there, you are not on their level. You took the easy way out. And a lot of people would view that as cowardice. That you were not afraid. You I mean, excuse me. You were very afraid of the people who were there who used to be somebody. Rightfully so. Them guys earned the positions that they had in their former organizations but if you are about something and you want to be taken serious that's who you go after so it's that you want to give people enough time and opportunity to figure out who's really on the yard with you who's really a trophy who's really worth points also give you an opportunity to make your weapon because when you hit them type of yards, you have to assume that you're selling 
and the cells around you are all very leery of you. So making a weapon isn't going to be easy. You're going to have to skip yard tell your Sally like, nah, I'm good on yard homes. I, I, I'm cool. I got to take care of some. I'm going to get on the phone or whatever you're going to tell them. And they can't tell you nothing. Yard's not going to be mandatory on a trash yard. And you're staying in because you're making your weaponry. So while your Sally's gone for that hour or whatever, you have an hour to work on whatever you're going to work on. And depending on what you're making, it may take you a couple of days to get it done right, to make it to where it's going to do the job the way it needs to be done. So, again, you have that to where you're you're trying to figure out who's who, what's what, who's the best target, and it gives you enough time. The 30-day one, probably not. It takes about 30 days for your visiting card to get cleared. But the 90-day and the 9-month one, you have an opportunity to get a visit. If you hit Clavo, then there you go. There's your chance to get some dope, make you some money, or buy you your TV, in both instances, it would be a chance if you don't have any property, get you a package to get you a TV. Because when, when you're done on that yard, if you're really with it, you're going to the shoe for a couple years. And that way you'll have your TV and stuff, right? Now, when I was in Pelican Bay, got out of the shoe in 1997, I went to Fish Row. I, land, I landed in a cell with the vato that he was headed to Tehachapi as well. So we had the discussion as dudes are going to do. Fuck it, homie. You want to do a holiday together? Simon, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to stay. Okay, cool. And that was how our conversation began. Me and this dude, right? And then he says, look. I just want to get one visit. And I said, what? And he says, yeah, I just want to be able to get one visit, get a clavo, so that way, you know, we can get some fed down. Mind you, we're coming from Pelican Bay Shoe. We're going to be the very first bus to go down to the Hatchapi to flip it to a main line because it was a 50-50 yard. So we're the first bus. And we had been told there was going to be a bus of actives every week from all the 180s going over there. And from the shoes, right? So we have our property. There's no reason, there's no need. It is unnecessary to get a visit and get some feria when we already have our property. So when he said, I just want to get a visit first, this and this and that, I said, well, that's not going to work for me, Holmes. And he was like, what do you mean? I said, I figure within 10 days, we'll clear orientation. I said, I think I need one, two, two yards to see who's on the yard and see who the best target is. I said, and by that, that third day, I'm going to get them. I'm going to move on them. And my Sally was like, oh, no, nah, Holmes, you know, hey, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I said, well, here's what we do. We're going to go down there and you do what you're going to do and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I said, because the longer you're there, the more people hear your name, Holmes. And if they kite you off the yard, Holmes, if them bottles drop a kite on you, you're going to have some explaining to do on the yard on why you were out there for 10, 15, 20, 30 days and you didn't get off. And instead, they dropped the kite on you. It's a bad look, Holmes. So I'm going to get off. As soon as I get there, I'm getting off. I'm going to find my target. I'm out of there. You do what you're going to do. Well... I told that story before you guys can go and look for it. He, that vato, my Sally. I didn't at that time recognize the feminine traits in that individual because apparently I hurt his feelings deeply. And he wound up being out there more than 90 days. And, uh, you know, he got disciplined. But, you know, that's a different story. Now, New Folsom. C facility in New Folsom was a stronghold back then. Up until the year 2000 was a stronghold for the Northern Raza. And it was a trash yard for the Southerners. Okay. A lot of times those, that the trash Southerners that were there, if a, if a homie came, a camarada came, landed on that yard and they knew who he was, 
they would go let them northerners know, hey, that dude right there, that's a soldado right there. You, you don't want to have him on this yard. And the northerners would try to move on him ASAP, get him out of there, which is what this is smart. Why would they let somebody post up that is known? So anyways, uh, the nine-month curfew, you, you could get there, you know, get you your feria, your visits, all that. Like I said, it, there was no DOs there. Okay. Well, let me let you in on something about these curfews. I remember being on the yard. We were in the oil. We were in that sake in New Folsom. And this was 96. And a legend came. There were always legends in that ad sake always being brought down. It was a thing that, that that used to be done back then. Somebody would catch a case and have a list of legends that they were supposed to call down as character witnesses. They would come down, they would get their party on, break up the monotony of being in the shoe. They would get firsthand knowledge of what's going on, get the pulse of, of what's happening in New Folsom. Well, a, le the, a legend came and when, we, when he came, those of us that had came off a of B facility that were back there in the oil, um, we were, every opportunity, we were whacking the Raza, the Southerners coming off a of C facility. If they had been out there too long, the, the so the rule back then, again, this is no longer in effect. The rule back then was, if it's a youngster that didn't know any better, south side him. That would mean three, four, five dudes jump him, stomp him out. I seen people get hurt very bad. Um, and that was his medicine. That was his check. And then he'd have an opportunity to clean that up, do a pegada, whack somebody, and then he, everything straight. The other rule was if a dude knew better, had been in the shoe, he was he was a politician, he was a camarada, and, and, he, and he was out there over 90 days and he came back there and he didn't whack anybody. I mean, he was, excuse me, he was over, out there more than nine months and he didn't whack nobody, whack him, whack him. And then he'll have an opportunity to whack somebody else and clean it up and start again, right? Well, the legend came down and he saw all these Southerners from B facility trying to kill all the dudes from C facility. And that's it, every time the yard came up. So he asked, hey, what, what is all this bell about? Why, why, are, why are you vatos doing this? And it was explained to him that there was a curfew on that yard. And he was not happy. He didn't even know about it. And he asked who put the curfew and everyone else was like, that they knew, you know, like, oh, well, this one did. And he was like, well, it's lifted. At that, from that point on, he lifted it. And... He said, there's no, there's no ratas over there. There's no Dios over there. There's like, what's, what's the fucking problem, Holmes? He said, so you mean to tell me that I'm not making money off this fucking yard for no reason? He was upset. And so the curfew got lifted right then and there. And I had a camarada. When it came out that the curfew was lifted, I had a camarada, and he was standing to my right. And he's from Compton Barrio Tres. Really, really solid, cool ass dude, man. And when it was said the curfew's lifted, get your asses out there. If you can establish the yard, establish that yard. Let's get this fed. When he heard that, when the junta broke up, he looked at me and the look in his eyes was like, unbelievable. I told this story before years back and I'm going to tell you why he looked at me like that. He had gone to see facility. This dude was with it. And somehow the northerners didn't, were never told who he was. And, and he, he wiggled out there for a little while. And then... He whacked an, an, another Southerner. 
somebody that he knew something about, had something on. He whacked him. And the victim told the Huras, make sure you put him on potty watch and x-ray him because he has some stuff inside of him. And because he said that, he took him to potty watch and he had a weapon keistered and some other stuff and they were able to get they were able to get that he was in that ad sag for approximately four years five years fighting that case he got two hung juries you only get three chances to hang somebody he got two hung juries on his third trial he caught a life sentence he didn't have life he had Lost that trial about three weeks, 30 days, about 30 days before the curfew lifted. So when he looked at me and he was looking at me like, can't believe it. He had an opportunity to go home. He did what he was supposed to do. He did what he was supposed to do. And kind of life sentence. On a yard that no longer had a curfew. So, you know, I tell these stories for you guys, man. Because I want you guys to understand. A lot of you guys do what you do because you don't like being told what to do. Well, out here, the people that are telling you what to do for the most part, they're telling you what to do because they care about you. Once you get to prison... But give a fuck. You're going to do what the hell you're supposed to do. Now, you have a choice in everything. But your pride and your ego are going to tell you to follow them rules. And them rules come with life sentences, the death penalty, and even death itself. So, there you have it. Another video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Everybody, please be safe. Be smart. And tell the ones you love that you love them, man. I'm out of here.